basketball team is planning a party. A slumber party. Mine? All the girls are coming, except Mary and Linda. And they won't be missed. Welcome back to another episode of the Medium Cool Show. Today, we travel back to the year 1982, because we're going to be talking about the cult horror slasher classic, The Slumber Party Massacre. No one's getting any sleep the night of The Slumber Party Massacre. Close your eyes for a second and sleep forever. Directed by Amy Jones. Written by Rita Mae Brown. So this film is during the whole, like the beginning of like, like really at the, the precipice of a slasher boom, the late 70s, early 80s. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we have like Halloween coming out, 1978. That's considered like the first quintessential banger classic fucking slasher movie, right? Mm -hmm. And then preceding that, we have the, the Giallos from Italy, a lot of proto slashers from Italy, films like Torso, directed by Sergio Martino. We've got the Giallo boom, starting with The Bird with the Crystal Plumage, directed by uh, Dario Argento. Argento. You've got the Lucio Fulci mm -hmm. Giallos. So we got to mention Mario Bava. i got to throw him in there. If I don't throw yeah, him in there, I, I'm, I was I'm wondering gonna, when he was going to come. I'm, gonna just, I'm, not, I'm, disrespecting, I'm disrespecting it. That started with The Blood and Black Lace, 1963, uh -huh. and The Girl Who Knew Too Much. And then. A really direct comparison to the Friday the 13th films would be A Bay of Blood, directed by Mario Bava. That is like a quintessential slasher, proto-slasher mm -hmm. in, the, in the genre. Mm -hmm. There's even direct kills, two direct kills that were taken to put in Friday the 13th, part one. Anyway, here we have Slumber Party Massacre, which comes that came out in 1982, Directed by Amy Jones, who was married to Michael Chapman. She was an editor in the in the seventies and eighties, but she's she was married to Michael Chapman, who was the cinematographer on *Raging Bull*. Oh, uh, okay. I think a lot of a lot of Scorsese. He's a lot. He's caught with Scorsese a lot. Uh -huh. The director of this, she was married to him. Uh huh. And the screenplay is based, was written by Rita Mae Brown, who was this feminist activist uh, at the time. And she wrote this screenplay as like a parody slasher of all these girls getting killed. Mm -hmm. And apparently she, I don't know, Amy Jones got like the script to it and she changed it to be like a more serious straight up mm -hmm. slasher against the wishes of the writer Rita Mae Brown. Oh, interesting. So... Should I keep going? I have... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But is, just is, uh, get your hand on my face. She shoots a weekend of the film for $1,000. She gets people together to shoot like a weekend of a film. She shoots it and shows it through, through her connections through Michael Chapman. Shows it to the one and only Roger Corman of New World Pictures. Oh. He sees it. He says, you know what, Amy? You're doing a great job. I can see your vision. I'll finance it for you with my company at New World Pictures for $225,000. And then they shoot the movie, they make it, the rest is history. This is $225,000? Yeah. yeah, isn't that good? It's a great, that's great. This is a phenomenal film. Yeah. For $225,000. Holy yeah. shit. Dude. Yeah. This is a great movie, guys. This yeah. movie is, does it, did your husband shoot it? No, I think someone else shot it. This is a phenomenal. It looks shot really movie. good. Yeah. 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 It makes sense. That... And this is a great. Just not not only is it well shot. It's a great film. Yeah. I I was going into it being like we're gonna put on something stupid. Yeah. This is gonna be some stupid slasher movie. We're just gonna zone out to you know yeah. take some edibles, chill. No, dude. This is a this is a banger of a movie. Yeah. I don't take edibles before movies or anything like that. No, but you. You yeah, smoke a blunt and you hit the crack pipe before a movie. Yeah, I'll do a little bit of a heroin mm -hmm. before, but never take an edible yeah. before. That's okay. too much for me. Okay. Uh, but yeah, we, we, got, we went into this thinking it was going to be like a cheap, sleazy, rip-off slasher movie that's just trying to take advantage of the hype of the slasher in the early 80s, yeah. right? But what we get here is a really well done, high body count, 
man, crazy manic psychotic driller killer on the loose who's like slaughtering all of these fucking senior girls yeah. dude, at, at a house that's having a slumber party. Yeah. And even before the slumber party, we get two kills. Yeah. Two bloody kills. Yeah. And then throughout the rest of the movie, we get like just, it's like the body stack and stack yeah. of this guy. And you, like, you don't even need to know anything about him. All you know, he's a fucking psycho killer who's yeah, you drilling get, people. He doesn't have any rhyme or reason yeah. to him. Yeah. You know, like he's not hidden from you. It's not like they're like, oh, you know, out of the shadows, mm -hmm. you know, a kill comes. It's like you see him directly yeah. in the first shot. You yeah. see him yeah. and you're like, they're like, this is the killer. This yeah. is him. He's just and a guy. And he's coming to kill all of them. Yeah. And it's not like, it's not like any kind of mystery to it. Mm. It's like, you're more like, holy shit, this guy's not going to stop. And yeah. he's fucking crazy. Uh huh. And, and the only backstory is that we hear little radio or... TV spots of a killer going around Venice Beach, yeah. basically. So we have that. And then the setup is it's just a group of, of varsity basketball players who one night have a slumber party. And then one by one, people start getting killed. Mm -hmm. But what I love so much is that the script structure, like the gradual pace of it is so well done too. Because at first you have some kills and then you have a kill, like there's kills going on at first and yeah. the, the, the party are not aware of it. Yeah. And they finally discover a body. And then they're like, wait, what's going on? But some people know that there's a killer around. Some people don't know there's a killer around. Yeah. You know, you have the... The, the, the neighbor. The neighbor girl yeah. and, and the fucking her sister. Yeah. And shit. And what we have to mention is there's so much humor in this too. There's yeah. so much comedy in this. The amount of fake scares in this is like the most I've ever oh my god seen yeah. so many fake scares in like, this like like there's so many fake scares of like what is it oh, oh it's like a yeah. it's a cat or something yeah. you know like yeah. there's just all these like tension building scenes and it's like nothing you know so then finally at the point in the slumber party where that that guy gets killed the mm -hmm. dude that's supposed to be like watching over her yeah, or whatever yeah, yeah. When he gets killed, I was like, wait, did he actually get killed? Did someone actually finally get killed? Because I was like, yeah. I, it just been had been leading up yeah, to like all yeah, these yeah. fake outs, you yeah. know? Mm -hmm. But then he wasn't killed? He was killed. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And also, there's these like really weird red herrings, too. Mm -hmm. Like, the guy who's just out in the middle of the night with the, the butcher knife, like, cut. He's like, oh, I'm just cutting snails. Yeah. I don't use pesticides. And you're just out with a huge butcher knife in the middle of the night. Yeah. It's like cutting snails and shit. <laughs> Who the fuck was that guy? That guy yeah. never dies. He just never comes back. He's just a random red herring. Oh, it's a yeah. guy like cutting snails in, yeah. in the middle of the night. Yeah. And I also love the the score. Mm -hmm. The music was like... Yeah. Like getting them getting chased and... And the thing is, there's so many fake scares, but it's almost like the amount of fake scares equaled the amount of actual kills in this. Yeah. Because there's so many kills. I don't know how many. There may be like 10 or so. Yeah, there's a lot of kills. There's, there's a lot of kills in this. And he, yeah. And the dude that plays the serial killer? Yeah. Great. He's amazing. Yeah, he just looks like some like mechanic. Yeah. He's and he's a he, random guy. He's like, you're so pretty. The motivation is unclear. There's no yeah. exposition to why this guy's killing all these people. There's no like yeah. past trauma. It's just straight up, oh no, there's a killer loose and he's killing all these girls. And that's yeah. literally that's all it is. Yeah. But it's the execution of the material that really elevates it past a sort of sleazy slasher. I mean, there is like a little bit of like sleaze to it in regards yeah, to yeah. some of the Roger Corman. Boobies. Yeah. You know? But I was surprised to find that it was directed by a woman and written by a feminist. Yeah. So, but there are a lot, like, I mean, there are a lot of, like, boobs shots in this, a lot of butt, naked butt shots in yeah. this, you know? There's some, there's some intercourse in it, right? Is there? Oh, is there? I don't remember. I, I feel like there is, but, hmm. yeah, that they, they have a little bit of, of, of that in there, which I can appreciate. Yeah. You know, a little, like... I mean, Roger Corman's like, dude, if we're going to sell this, you got to have a little bit of that. You got to have, like, you got to have sex and violence, at least, for yeah. us to sell this movie. And it, and it did sell, and it made $3.6 million. Nice, dude. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. That's a turnaround. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, I love the scene where the boyfriend comes to be like, come on, like, come on, just come over to my place. They're not going to care. Mm. Come on, they know I'm a good guy and stuff. And then she's like, okay, I'll go get my things. And then she goes and then she comes back in and his head's just like chopped off. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, Slumber Party Massacre. Um, it was a, yeah. Fun watch. Yeah, but at first it got like really bad reviews, but it's like it's like a cult classic, and it spawned like a ton of sequels and shit. Really? Cool. Yeah, that's cool. One other thing is that I saw this movie called The House on Sorority Row, which is kind of the same premise. There's a slasher going on, sl- a slasher going around, but you know you don't know who it is. It's a mystery, and that was a really underwhelming film for me. And I thought that this was going to either be worse than that, or like equal to that. But I was like, my expectations were blown away. Yeah. So, yeah, for like that sort of women getting killed slasher shit, this is a great pick for that. Yeah, vibe. I agree. Yeah. Have you guys seen Slumber Party Massacre? Which slashers should we watch next and talk about? I want to talk about some more. Halloween's coming up. Ooh. Don't do that again. (laughs) 